Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Charles, and I'm on a mission to find what's inside everything. To get the answers I'm looking for, I've got an industrial CT scanner from Lumafi. It takes X-ray images from all around the subject, then builds a 3D model capturing every detail. Today, we're looking inside of a Logitech MX2 computer mouse. This should be pretty cool. There's a lot of intricate details packed inside of this, and they're all inside of a light plastic housing that'll make it easy to get a high quality scan. I'm just gonna tape it to a fixture block and let it scan for two hours. There's two things in here that make me wanna know what's going on inside of it. First of all, you have a side button, three side buttons actually, and this horizontal scroll wheel, and they're not actually aligned with where I would expect the circuit board inside of this mouse to be. So we should be able to scan that and see what's going on. That's the mouse. So. Reviewing it from the side here, you can see that there's actually two circuit boards uh, kind of along the bottom plane of the mouse. So there's one here that has our massive sensor chip, as well as the USB port that sticks out the front, and the little power switch going to the battery charger. We can see kind of all the parts that aren't just the injection molded plastic case and the buttons. So we can see, uh, first of all, the battery. This thing uses a lithium ion battery of some form, and it is rolled up and I bet if we zoom in we can actually see the connection tabs sandwiched into there so let's enable cropping show bounds yeah look at that there's the anode or the cathode I don't know which this is the one tab goes into the middle of the pack attaches to one electrode and then the other connection actually happens externally right here there are three wires on the battery I would strongly anticipate that this is a single cell lithium polymer. So that would mean that there's going to have to be a uh, probably a thermal sensing device, a thermistor, built into this battery pack somewhere. So let's actually make a region of interest on just the battery and see what we can find. I've isolated the battery and added in a slice plane so we can go through 10 microns at a time and see what's going on in there. Um, start a little bit outside, we have a big ribbon cable that is going off to those three bonus buttons on the side. There it is. Okay, so we have our one terminal. Makes a very subtle connection into the battery pack, but it's there. And then our other terminal, which is a bit more robust. Can barely make it out in the 3D, but it's a bit more clear in the slice. This is our thermal protection. So that's gonna be a thermistor, and it's gonna be hooked up between usually the negative terminal of the battery and the third bonus safety terminal of the battery. And that means that the charging circuit can figure out how hot the battery has gotten. Because you really don't want to be trying to charge a battery if it's, you know, 150 degrees Celsius for some reason. Um, that would probably mean it's about to catch fire. Or if it's like 60 degrees, that's too hot for whatever reason. It'll really degrade the battery life if it's used like that. Or if it's too cold, that will also degrade the battery life. Um, these things really want to just be left at room temperature or body temperature. Let's look at the clicky scrolly thingy. Here in the front of the mouse, we have a motor. So that's actually living right about above the power switch under this button. That's just a full brushed DC motor. What is that motor actually driving? Well, it's gonna wind up being something injection molded in plastic. So that's just the cheapest way to manufacture everything. So that's what we're gonna wind up seeing here. We have these two torsion springs. I think are actually responsible for the middle mouse click and letting this entire mechanism rock up and down. And I think this coil spring right here is what's actually giving us our detent action. And speaking of detent action, what do we see here but a sphere? So this right here is the ball that gets driven into some part of this uh, ring. That's the part you scroll with, it's this big ring. And this ball is gonna get forced into or out of engagement by this motor actuating. What you can see while we're in here is actually how the scrolling is picked up. So when you spin this wheel, what's turning that motion into an electronic signal that can be picked up by the controller and sent to your PC? Well, it's this three pin package here, this slotted grating here, which is going to be a piece of plastic, so it's not very easy to see, this two pin package here. So this is going to be an optical source, an LED. It's going to be shining, presumably infrared light, through the thickness of the scroll wheel, and it's then picked up by this package over here, which I'm going to imagine is a dual photodiode device so that you can detect the direction that each of those stripes is swinging by as it blocks the LED. And then those two signals 
Well, they get passed down into the circuit board and do whatever. Probably just go through some capacitors and resistors and directly into a microcontroller analog to digital converter. We've already looked at the main vertical scroll wheel, but what about the horizontal scroll wheel? Well, that's one of those things I was curious about, how it's actually installed in there. So let's zoom in on this region here and see what we can find. I need the sense that this might actually be a magnetic encoder, which would be a little different from the, uh, the primary scroll wheel. So that would suggest that this little puck at the front of the horizontal scroll wheel is actually a neodymium magnet that's diametrically polarized. And then this chip right nearby is actually a Hall effect sensor, or rather a rotary encoder sensor. And what those do is they determine the direction of the magnetic field that they're in and can output that as an angle. These are used often as well, rotary encoders, uh, especially for knobs on like um, a car dashboard or something. You know, the volume knob, if it just spins forever, it's probably these days not actually a mechanical thing going click, 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 click in a circle. It's gonna be a magnet on a little plastic bushing hovering over one of these chips on a circuit board. It's a really inexpensive, super reliable way of building it. So it would make sense if uh, that's what we use for this, but that would also mean that it should be susceptible to external magnetic fields, which is fine, I guess. Like you're not, you're not using these next to a bunch of really big magnets. So that might just be it. And that is pretty cool. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave us a like. And if you want to see inside something, make sure to leave us a comment letting us know what to take a look at next. If you want to support the channel, share this video with a friend or check out hacksmith.store. But if you want to see inside of everything, get subscribed.